So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the, the steering committee, a very uh, well, good afternoon. And you know, for, for those of you in the Middle East, uh, good morning and um, in Europe as well. And then we have a lot of interest from uh, the, the Americas, Brazil, Mexico, and Venezuela. So if you, if you manage to stay up for this or, or, or get up for this, uh, well, glad you can join us. Um, my name is Joachim van der Molen. Uh, I'm the secretary for Drops Asia and I'm based out of Singapore. So with me are uh, Shi Beng Hui with Shell Malaysia, William Lai with Baker Hughes, um, uh, David Jamison, um, uh, Boltai uh, Master out of Sunny Aberdeen. Um, we're supposed to have Wayne Bauer with, with us. He sends us his apologies. He's got a, a stomach bug and he didn't sleep so well last night. So um, he'll have to excuse himself, but uh, we are in good hands with the, uh, with the rest of the, uh, the panelists. Um, so we've uh, mentioned so many uh, uh, countries to start. So I'll start with a with a quick poll just to to find out you know uh, where you are dialing in from. So you'll see a poll on the screen uh, coming up now. So just if you could uh, take a moment uh, to to answer that. So. Today we're talking about failing uh, safely or failing lucky, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna try to attempt to summarize this now, uh, but I'll leave that in the capable hands of Peng Hui. Um, following that, David will expand on that and will help us visualize the topic uh, with a bow tie. Uh, so following this, we will have an audience-led panel discussion um, uh, where William will join us uh, to to share his uh, perspectives. So we're using a Zoom webinar, uh, which means you're unable to share your video or audio, uh, but we highly encourage you to use the chat box to interact with other participants. And I see there's already 33 messages, so that's perfect. So um, the panel discussion is audience-led. Um, which means that, you know, we really look for your questions and, and we try as much as possible to use the Q&A function of the Zoom in here because it's a bit difficult for us to keep track of everything that's going on in, in the chat. So if you have a question, use the Q&A function for that. So following the panel discussion, we'll be uh, trans transitioning to our Drops Metaverse uh, app. Um, and let me just change the screen for a second. Uh, this is the, the agenda. Um, so we'll change to the uh, Jobs Metaverse app where you'll be able to um, interact with um, uh, speakers and the other participants using an avatar. And you, you'll need to install a, a piece of software for that on your computer. Um, you know, if you work for on a, in a corporation, it may be difficult to, to do that. Uh, but otherwise, um, you know, perhaps to use, use a personal uh, computer. Okay, so uh, this uh, webinar is uh, kindly uh, sponsored um, by uh, Shell, uh, DropSafe, Stop Drop Tooling, Greenpin, and Access. And I'll give a little bit of an introduction about them uh, later. Now, during the previous webinars, we've had lots of requests if, from people if they could have a certificate of attendance. And I kind of res resisted that for a long time. At uh, this time on an experimental basis, um, you, you know, we, we have created a certificate, um, but it's paid. So people who, who went online and purchased that in advance, they will receive a ticket um, after, after the event, after a few days. Um, and if you're still keen on that, uh, you haven't signed up, you can still do so for the next uh, 24 hours. So with that, um, I'd like to hand the floor over to you, uh, Beng Hoi. Yeah, I just wanted to welcome everybody again uh, to, to the webinar, hopefully the, the, the topics of interest. Um, great to see the participation from, uh, from, uh, from these locations here. Um, well, we have folks from, from Europe, thanks for getting up early. And uh, yeah, nice rep representation from uh, from the Middle East and, and Asia there. And not quite sure where somewhere else is, but you know, welcome all, welcome all. Thank you, thank you for making time. Uh, so my name is uh, Beng Hui, and I'm the uh, uh, I'm a HSC uh, manager for the drilling um, organization uh, in in this region of Shell. All right, I, I have a drilling uh, background. Um, but prior to this, you know, I, and 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 uh, recently moved into a HSC a role for for for, for the wells department. Um, so maybe, maybe you know, a, a bit of a caveat. A, a lot of my, my examples here is, is very drilling centric. 
uh, but thankfully, uh, you know, the, the panel today has 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 brought experience and they can interject. Um, and of course, we have we have the the you know full forum here with people from with, with all, all sorts of experience. So yeah, really looking forward to to the next hour. Or so uh, not not just to hear your questions, but also to hear your comments, right? So just just three slides to start, I think, and and I will we'll do a quick uh, easy easy poll. We have a, a bunch of uh, questions set up for the next hour. Or so so we'll, we'll we'll kick off with something of a warm up. Um, if you don't mind uh, flicking to the next one, uh, uh, Joachim. Um, I'm still seeing the, the the location one. Yeah, so so this one, maybe the voiceover is a little bit slow and the video has played, but uh, really the question just to set the scene um, is, is uh, you know, to the topic at hand is whether we feel safely or we feel lucky, you think, uh, in this particular scenario. I'm not sure if everybody saw the video, it was pretty quick. Um, Joachim, yeah, but um, anyway, if you can uh, put in put in uh, what you think and uh, we'll, 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 we'll crack on. Mm. Interesting um, <laughs> results here, but uh, yeah, by and large, uh, I think the, the the participants feel feel that um, the two the two folks there were were pretty pretty lucky in this in this particular incident, right? And maybe the the, the poll wasn't set up uh, all, all all too um, all too clear. Maybe some folks were thinking about the fact that these two guys walked away safely at the end, but ultimately, we, in in this case, they they were they were quite lucky to 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 be alive after after that particular incident. So that that was just to set the scene, right? Before I, I got I got stuck in with the with the with the text and the presentation. Um, so so with this slide, my my intent is just uh, to start by by introducing the concept. And um, okay, so so in shell. Um, that the concept that uh, of feel safe and, and feel lucky is, is really premised around uh, the, the mindset that 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 people uh, will ultimately make mistakes and and you know the human performance angle and and un unforeseen um, events uh, can occur uh, despite our best efforts to to plan for for success in our, in our in our work right and and uh, you know it's, it's it's really important to to to, to highlight this fundamental shift in, in philosophy um, and and. Uh, so this is a a, a step change, a uh, shift away from from thinking that that all all incidents are, are preventable, uh. um, and, and because of this shift in philosophy, right, uh, and, and because we, we recognize that failure is not something we can we can uh, always control, completely control. Uh, our aim at the end of the day is to ensure you know our folks don't don't get hurt, uh, right, um, by by making sure we have enough barriers in place uh, that to keep them safe and when something does happen. Uh, so. I'm already sort of alluding to that the right hand side of the bow tie, right? We do a lot of things on the left hand side to prevent something from happening, but when something happens, we want we want also barriers on the right hand side um, to, to to prevent uh, the escalation uh, to to something more severe. So, David, I'm just just warming up the folks here. So so just just to crack on, right? So now when 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 Shell classifies a REM four plus incident, uh, we we differentiate you know uh, the the classification between um, an incident that feels lucky. Or a HPI, feel lucky HPI, or feel safely uh, a HPE. Right? So that's that's how we've uh, opted to use uh, uh, the, those those acronyms, uh, right? And this is all based on the presence or the absence of of areas, uh, right? Um, so just just maybe elaborating a little bit more on uh, what we call a, a feel feel lucky uh, incident. So when something is said to be to be to be uh, a feel lucky incident, it means it's only uh, really luck at the end of the day preventing someone from getting hurt. So um, you know, as, as for the definition, uh, barriers weren't in place or were not effective, and and this is not 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 somewhere we want to be. Uh, and this is what we call HPI. Just just uh, just to recap, and um, you know the, the the next one, the next um, um, KPI, I want to talk about is is of course uh, the, the the opposite of that, the, the fail safely in, uh, philosophy, where you know uh, in contrast, barriers were in place when something happened, and that all those barriers worked to prevent someone from 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 getting hurt. Uh, so HPE, just to recap again, and uh, you know, in contrast, we want to. This is something we say we want to drive and embed, and this is a good outcome. We want to celebrate this outcome. And HPI is not lah. Um, so I think I'll I'll stop there, or maybe before I forget, right? The last the last point here, uh, the 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 reason why why we're we doing this is is because we, we feel that the previous uh, reporting definitions have led to underreporting of our RAM four plus incidents, right? Um, you know that there was this feeling that 
you know the 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 events, uh, rainfall plus events are happening. Uh, they have been they are obviously being reported, uh, but we will because we looked at the barriers in some of these events and we said, well, everything uh, uh, was in place, you know, people were protected, the potential was low. So then uh, that get, those kind of events get reported uh, with a low potential and then they get lost in the, in, the, in the stack of other minor incidents and near misses, uh, right? And we feel that that data set is, um, is, is pretty significant. It's a bit of a shame that we don't, we don't uh, get access to that. We're not, we don't recognize that, uh, right? So, you know, HPEs, just to preempt on the question uh, that, that David asked, uh, asked me yesterday, what, 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 you know, uh, what, what, what's, why, why HPE, right? What do we do differently? So HPEs can help us recognize when, when our barriers are, were, were effective. Um, and then at the same time, you know, uh, things still happen nevertheless. So it uh, helps us identify uh, gaps in our systems that led to the event in the first place. And so that's, you know, my, my, my five minutes on this slide here. Uh, folks, if you don't mind, um, moving on to the next. And I'll, I'll really quickly talk you through um, the, the an illustration of uh, of the of the process flow here. Um, when we when we are faced with a, with an incident, uh, the the process starts with um, the reporting, obviously, of an incident with uh, uh, with consequence or uh, or a near miss. So this is purposefully a, a very broad capture, right? And then moving on to the right, the first diamond. The question is asked, right? If if the event could have resulted in a RAM4 plus consequence if, if no action was uh, uh, have been taken or if no barriers were in place. Um, so that's, that's, that's quite key here, right? The, the, the push here is to make sure we assess the risk in, from a RAM perspective without the barriers in place as a starting point, all right? So, um, so without barriers in place, if the incident cannot reach a RAM4 potential, then, you know, say it's three or a two, then it drops out of this stage and it's not a, it's not a HPE la, um, or a high potential event. And, um, However, however, the flip side is we can if if the incident is you know has a, has a RAM four plus potential, then it moves to the right, then it enters the the, the high potential event space, the 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 the, the next box there, um, and then we, we go through a, a set of questions again. Like right, did a, we ask the question did a, did a routine action or a planned barrier work as as intended uh, to to uh, for for this to be. Um, uh, a fail safe event, right? And ultimately, if the answer is no, then, um, you know, we, we were pretty lucky in that sense. There's nothing that really could have, uh, could have happened, uh, could have uh, prevented this, this incident from happening. Uh, but we were re really lucky that nobody got hurt nevertheless. And that's what we call a fail, fail lucky incident. So that's real, real quick on the, on, on how we, we classify um, incidents in Shell. And my last slide, uh, Joachim, is, um, is a, is a slide to just share um, a, um, a process that, that we in Shell call job by design, right? Uh, I think this is a good lead in for, for, for David who will cover how a bow tie can help visualize the drops risk in a, in a, in a work area. And, and I guess this is another way to, to, to look at this, right? To plan for a job, uh, to identify um, risk and, and minimize people exposure, right? In a nutshell, uh, because um, if, you, if you look at the text here, it defines the people that are, oops, that are going to be in the job um, and and nothing more. So you know exactly how many folks are going to be in the job doing the job. Uh, so you, you you've got the right people in there at all times. No 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 bystanders, or no no people who are no, no one who's who's just curious. Uh, and and with the plan procedures, of course. And then of course you you uh, you you have a de you have a detail uh, detail um, a plan on where people are in 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 the work site. Where they should stand when they when they do the job and uh, where they can sort of pull back to to be safe, lah, right? And it, it talks about uh, it helps us uh, folks uh, identify hazards and risks and the mitigations uh, at, for the task at hand, lah, right? So that's that's what we try and encompass in in a conversation around a job by, by design template, lah, right? Um, maybe worth highlighting at this stage, you know, we talk about drops, but uh, obviously, uh, you know, the in the, in the IOGP life saving rules. Um, the, the line of fire risk uh, was was also introduced, and uh, we see many of our our, our high potential uh, incidents uh, coming originating in the drop space and also from 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 uh, from from uh, various line line of fire uh, 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 areas, uh, right? So then maybe maybe just to wrap up um, before I hand over. So if if you look at this this template and you you consider a bow tie right we can we can put all all the barriers in place to prevent a drops event, um, but we think you know based on this philosophy that I talked about inevitably something will will drop something will happen because 
we, we say nothing is foolproof. You know, pe people will make mistakes, the system is flawed and something will happen. Uh, what, what's left on the, on the right hand side of the bow tie, um, oftentimes I have to admit from a drops perspective, right, isn't, isn't a lot, lah, right? It's, it's, you know, inevitably it's almost got to be a, a buried off uh, drop zone that will that will prevent someone from getting seriously hurt, lah, right? And and I want to just maybe make a plug for this 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 process by saying, you know, job by design can can help us highlight that, lah. And folks, that's that's me, um, Joachim. I'm 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 gonna wrap up here and hand over to to yourself or, or to to uh to uh to David next. Thanks for that, Bang Hoi. Um, so now it's over to uh, to David Jameson to to share his perspective uh, with the use of a bow tie. Please go ahead, David. Hi. Um, good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. Um, yep. Yeah, my name is David Jameson. I'm the founder of South Technical. I'm a process safety engineer, um, and um, my experience is predominantly from um, offshore in the UK oil and gas industry. Um, but as we uh, join other industries we're learning that dropped objects you know still remains a huge um, problem everywhere so you know i've got a couple of uh, slides a few questions to ask and i'll give a live uh, demonstration so let me just um share um here we go yeah so we've developed bowtie master which is a cloud-based software product that can help you um visualize your risk uh, using uh, bow ties but let me just uh, move across so um, so, um, you know, as I've just been shown in the presentation there, of course, you know, we, we saw that incident and we know that, you know, like dropped up, you know, that was a very scary incident. Um, and these are some statistics from, you know, various parts of the world. And, you know, what I take away from this is that dropped objects are a huge problem. And it's certainly not limited to just one location, to one industry. You know, it's obviously an issue everywhere. Um, so what can we do uh, about it? So we've now got a quick question on um, falling object causes. So I believe we're going to um, bring our whiteboard up that you can all uh, input your um, answers to what, what do we think are the causes of falling objects? Okay, that's fine. Sorry, I'll just uh, continue. So thankfully, uh, here's, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, so there's lots of uh, causes of dropped objects and here are some of them here we might not understand all the hazards we might deviate you know um from our working practices unsafe conditions ignored there might be changes that we don't manage effectively we might not have the right equipment we often don't may, may not plan the job um as fully as required so as you said there's lots of causes of falling objects and I think that's one of the issues there's no one cause that's the like main uh, contributor certainly in my experience from having to have investigated dropped object incidents is that there's no you know one um thing so in terms of falling object prevention well we do lots and lots of things to prevent falling objects um you, you know from before and after the job checking the inventories we do inspections we use specific equipment specific for the scenario that we're looking at we keep people out of harm's way we train people we demonstrate their competence and um, you know we secure the tools when we're working and so on and so on and i'm sure you know that there's lots and lots of things that i could add to that list um however i think one of the um and this is almost a a uh, paradox is that we do so much to prevent dropped objects or minimize the consequences if we do drop an object that we think we're safe because there's lots of activity being done um, and that's not uncommon for lots of other you know um, accident scenarios as well so one one of the many ways that we can help prevent that is to uh, use uh, bow tie diagrams now bow tie diagrams i feel they're an, they're an excellent tool to visualize and understand uh, your risks of scenarios exactly like dropped objects. It can be great to train people on the like job as well. But crucially, and this is what I'm going to hopefully highlight through my live demonstration, is that you understand the role that each barrier plays and also what can make that barrier fail. So just a quick primer for those of you who might not know what a bow tie diagram is. There's one shown there. They're named a bow tie diagram because when they become a bit larger, they look like the gentleman's fashion accessory. 
So you've got your hazard in the center, that's your source of harm. So for us, that would be objects you know, at height. The top event, the green circle, that's the point at which you lose control of the hazard. Nothing bad's happened yet, but you're no longer in control. So that might be dropping the object. The threats on the left are what can cause the top event, so what could cause the object to drop, and the consequences in red on the right are the undesirable outcomes of dropping an object. And in between, we've got our barriers, and each barrier should be robust enough that it can stop the event in its own tracks um, and either prevent the top event from happening, or if the top event did happen, substantially minimize or prevent the consequences. What's not shown in that picture, but you'll see in a second, is there's uh, escalation or degradation factors. What can make a barrier fail? And this is the point I want to try and get across today is we do so much work to prevent dropped objects, but actually a lot of that work we do is to strengthen the barriers that we've got. And for each di the different threat, we might not have as many barriers as we think. Oh, and sorry, here's just some more, uh, sorry, actually, um, there's a bit now that it's up here, but yeah, so here's some other benefits of uh, bow ties, you know, that can be used to help identify hazards, help to train people. If you're discussing using bow ties before a like, job with drops, it might promote a positive um, culture. Indeed, it's good for management reviews. It gets them up to speed quite quickly, but crucially, it'll increase people's awareness of what the hazards and what the barriers uh, are. And yeah, just finally, before I flip over, just because we haven't seen an incident, just because we haven't seen a dropped object for a long time, although that's a good thing, you know, let's not take that as a false sense of security that everything's safe, you know, um, you know, the prevention of incidents isn't measured by the absence of incident, it's by the presence of barriers and bow ties are a, are a fantastic way to demonstrate that you've uh, got your barriers present. So let me just uh, flip over. So this is how our uh, software here, hopefully you can, um, Hopefully you can all uh, see that. So this is the Bowtie Master software package here, but there's plenty of other ways to build uh, bow ties. So I've just taken uh, one event. You know, there's many other ways that we can look at this. So you know, we've said uh, this is um, you know for people working at height with tools. So we've got some objects that are at height, and of course the top event is that we can drop those objects. Um, I've split this up into four separate. Threats, this is the beauty of bow ties if done properly, is that you can really uh, zoom down to the correct level of detail. So simply, you know, saying that a threat could be someone dropping an object, well, that's fine, but where are they dropping it from? What were they doing? Uh, was it an object that they were like a tool that they took up there or, or was it something that was already there? You know, so it's uh, very good to be specific. So I've taken four here. Let me zoom in so that you can all see that. So tools dropped from the work site um, onto Lower decks, I should probably add, um, you know, that's like during the operation. Um, you could have tools left in place after the completion of the job and then they subsequently fall. There could be loose objects that are up there that's knocked by the uh, person doing the like uh, work, or indeed, you know, things like nuts and bolts, you know, are maybe left in place, you know, the like, work site's not fully uh, clear. And of course, if we drop an object, there's lots of other things that could happen, but I've just put one here, you know, uh, that we could, uh, you know, an injury, an injury or fatality of people that are hit by the object. So that's all good. Um, but let's really look now into the, uh, you know, the uh, beauty of bow tie. So if I expand this one here, well, the only way to stop the tools being dropped on uh, while we're doing the task is to uh, adequately secure them. Um, that's all. You know, we could argue that in the hands of trained and competent people, that's fine, but arguably that's all that one barrier. A trained and competent person making sure that they've adequately secured the tools. I'm going to show you some escalation factors now. And these are uh, these three uh, squares here. These can't cause an incident, but what they can do is that would mean that they could uh, weaken this barrier so that if someone did drop a tool, then this barrier you know, um, might not do what it's required. So things like we could inadequately secure the Tool. We could have that the lanyard or you know have it secured, you know that um, that uh, retention fails, or indeed we've not given the person the right uh, length of you know um, lanyard, so they can't actually perform the task and keep the tool secured. So any one of those three things might actually result in this fire being weakened. 
And then all it takes is one lapse, one little mistake, and suddenly you can drop um, an object. Um, and if I go down to the next one, um, again, the working practice is that after you've completed the job, you return all tools. You know, I mean, not, ev no, not everyone has this working practice, but some might have that tools are returned to, you know, that drops tools are, um, are at height tools have got a specific um, cabinet. And indeed, tools might not be uh, returned to cabinet or tools might be left. So again, you know, that's something else on, on the operator there that there'll be a working practice to um, make sure um, that tools aren't left uh, in place. And then just the final few, um, you know, loose discarded objects fall during the task. And indeed, you know, I might, I might put the uh, wrong one here, but yeah, but um, small parts, nuts and bolts, etc. they should be appropriately secured, you know, against being uh, dropped in, you know, depending what industry that you work in, there's different ways, uh, you know, of achieving that. But indeed, you know, uh, parts come loose or parts might fall off the like tool. So again, you know, that's all, all it takes to weaken that barrier. And then indeed, you know, um, a gust of wind or something being knocked, you know, might cause something uh, to drop. And then lastly, you know, um, and this is a very common occurrence, unfortunately, something's left in place at the work site and falls at a later date. Um, and indeed, not everywhere, but our working practice I've seen is that there's an inventory taken of all objects, um, you know, that are up there. Uh, and then, you know, if, if there's no inventory taken after the like, job, how do you know um, that um, that something hasn't been left up there? Um, and I've just, just uh, finally, you know, Despite all, all of that work that we do, it may well be that we um, still drop an object, but obviously we want no personnel in that um, drop zone. Um, and indeed, um, um, if, if, if we don't have that, it means that there's nobody in harm's way. Now, I was going to go back to one of the polls here, but I'll just not. But it's more to say, you know, I was going to ask what are some of the reasons why this barrier um, might not um, be in good health? And that might be that there's poor working practices of people crossing barriers. It could be that the barriers aren't, you know, adequately like visible, you know, the use of tape maybe instead of a hard barrier or, you know, um, things and things uh, not being clear or, or indeed there's a work party that are planned to do some work uh, below a party working out. So there's lots of reasons why this barrier um, isn't, uh, it might not be robust. So if I zoom out, you'll see that becomes quite large, but, you know, with our software, I'm sure with quite a lot of others, you can show and hide. Uh, just what you need. Um, so the main point for me is to say that um, um, there's lots of causes of dropped objects. There's lots and lots of work that we do to stop those causes from resulting in dropped objects. But, and those are the barriers that we have in place. Um, and that's what's shown in the, in the gray square here. But there's lots and lots of things that can mean that the health of these barriers might not be you know, as good as we would like it. So uh, we do lots and lots of work, um, but it's more to get across that for each of the individual causes of dropped objects, there might not be very many uh, barriers in place to stop that particular event, but there are lots of reasons why that would fail. So we must remain ever vigilant, you know, have a, a constant sense of vulnerability to our, to our like, dropped objects and make sure that we've got the, the necessary assurance in place that we prevent these escalation factors, these degradation factors from weakening our, our barriers. And we only do that, you know, through rigorous working practices, assurance, audit, you know, training of our people, you know, demonstrating that they're competent. Um, and bow ties is one of the many tools we've got available that might help to visualize that. Um, and um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully they can be used to help um, prevent uh, objects. So um, that, was the, that, that was the end of my um, demonstration. Um, apologies, that was a bit uh, shorter than planned just due to us uh, not having those polls. Uh, so I'll maybe I'll stop the share and I'll hand back over um, to the panel now. Yeah, so uh, David, sorry about the uh, whiteboard. I think uh, it, it worked perfectly in uh, in our trials. And then when we have uh, close to 100 people online, my, my Zoom just crashed when I opened that up. But I can still open the polls if you like, just not the whiteboard. Uh, so is there any um, any you would like me to, to open? Um, yeah, let me just... Uh... Yeah, what was the red... Tape barrier question. 
Yeah. yeah so. Or, or 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 even yeah, why are drops so hard to control? Uh, yeah, that was maybe one. But yeah, but let me just. Uh, okay. I'll just launch it. Yeah. So here you can answer multiple uh, uh, options. All right. So a lot of people are answering already. Um, yeah, and I see that somebody's put a comment in about further separate in the top event, and you know that's absolutely right. You know, I would say that if you're using bow tie diagrams, you use them in the way that they're the most value to your organization. And absolutely, yeah, some people might want to have separate bow ties, you know, for um, you know different categories of dropped objects. That's completely, yeah, that's completely right. All right. So I'll end this poll and show the results. Sorry if you were still thinking about what to answer uh, too late. Um, here, here are the results. Yeah, and I'd say that, that like my take on that, yeah, that's, um, you know, I completely agree with that spread of um, results when we're trying to prevent major instance, I always try and, you know, get people to look at, you know, the, um, the uh, inherent safety, you know, uh, can we prevent a hazard be before we look to control it and then mitigate it? But of course, that answer you've got there, the gravity never sleeps. Of course, you absolutely cannot prevent that from happening. You know, that's a source of harm that will always be there. Um, and indeed, yeah, our exposure is huge. There's lots and lots of uh, lifting that needs done and of course yeah there's yeah that very different types of like drops you know and um very um, different controls and I, and I hope that's what i got across you know with the like bow tie there so i think those three things particularly yeah um, yeah so let's see if we um get to do one more uh, regarding the red tape barrier let's see how effective do you think that traditional red tape barrier barricade is in keeping people out of the line of fire of dropped objects. Okay. Right. Yeah. I guess. Um, I guess it depends on the situation whether it's uh, it's it's very good. And uh, but in some cases, uh, red tape barriers is not uh, not suitable. You want to elaborate on that, Beng Hoi or David? Well, I, I can try. Um, maybe what would what could help drive or, or, or help with this discussion is slide um, uh, slide nine. I want to say um, in the in the period, if you don't mind dragging that over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we talked about you know the the barrier diagram and uh, David focused very much on on the left hand side before something happened. But um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, if you think about this from a feel safe uh, perspective, what what can what can keep people safe right uh, from from uh, from drop objects uh, on the right hand side after something has happened is is um, it's not a lot like I like like I like I mentioned earlier right so um, barricades um, is is um, or, or 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 red zones or drop zones are are, are there you can use net covers as, as one more thing or, and then I think David and I were chatting about you know um, secondary retention and things like that like, but um, yeah so just to just to maybe address the whole question around sorry, ben uh, Hoi. sorry which which slide did you want me to show uh because we, oh, we yeah, reshuffle this, them no that's fine i was talking to slide 18 and then uh, yeah 20 is uh, great okay good 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 all right here we go we're fantastic oh well 20 now i think i'm, I'm done with this uh, this is to make the point or maybe just go back to to to, to that to that one um uh, slide 18 oh yeah, so I think I've got them uh, mixed up. Okay. This one, is it? No, 18, the one before. Okay. Yeah. I'm... So, so just to emphasize the point about uh, what David was saying, there's, uh, you know, so many sources of, uh, of drop objects. Um, and, you know, that, uh, uh, we do so many things and but ultimately, you know, each each barrier protects against one one type of uh, drop, drop object risk, right? And maybe we, we say the magnitude of drops, right? Um, there's like like uh, in the example, the working at height example. Uh, obviously, in, in many of our sites, we have overhead equipment that that's installed. And then, uh, last but not least, in many sites, we do a lot of uh, equipment and material handling, right? And these are all the, the sources, uh, right? And um, those those barriers uh, to prevent a drop event, uh, we we share. Um, it doesn't need to be, you know. Um, uh, 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 you know something mechanical it can be a system it can be training like 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 we've alluded to but if you look on the on the right hand side after something has happened it, it is it is looking pretty scarce right so um and, and to that point 
you know, what, you know what's what's an effective uh, zone zone uh, uh, management tool, uh, right? And maybe then it's uh, this is a good time to just flick over to that to that last slide, um, Jokins. Yeah. So bear with me. So red tape barriers. Yep, they they have their use. Um, I think the next one. Um, one. But um, yeah, they are also uh, different uh, different. They have their better better barricades or, or barriers out there. Like, um, and uh, this table uh, um, shows, you know, the things that we can do as a minimum. Um, you know, there, there are recommended practices here around making your barriers uh, more visible, uh, sturdier, and so on and so forth, lah, right? So um, the importance of, 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 of this barrier on the right-hand side of the bow tie cannot be, uh, you know, cannot, cannot be emphasized enough. Lah. So that, that's the, the whole reason for that poll question, lah, right? Um, red zones, yes, red tape, yes, but uh, there's, there is more we can do. Um, although it's all centered around the principle of a, of a drop zone and then uh, managing that zone effectively, right? when, when folks are uh, need to be in there and when, when folks not, don't don't need, don't need to be in there, um, yeah. So I think that that completes my spiel, uh, um, uh, uh, Joachim. Okay, perfect. So um, yeah, while, while I'm sharing the the, the slides, um, I'd just like to uh, ask the audience. Uh, so we'll be transitioning to the panel discussion soon, um, but um, before we do that, we have a, a short uh, intermission and then um, so just bear with me for a second. Um, so yeah, I would just like to, to thank again the, the sponsors for this, uh, this event. Um, of course, uh, Shell Malaysia, uh, who are, you know, founding member for Drops Global as well as the Drops Asia ch chapter. And then we have uh, Stop Drop Tooling, um, who provide tools for working at height, uh, following the principles of the recommended practice for tools for working at height from, from drops. Um, then we've got uh, Greenpin, uh, which is, uh, they have recently uh, released a, a four part shackle um, by request of the drops uh, community, um, because obviously, yeah, a four part shackle provides extra safety, but also introduces risks uh, because it has four parts. So by our request, they developed that. Um, then we've got uh, Access, who provide a range of uh, services um, for, for drops prevention, including uh, training, uh, software, um, uh, and the inspections itself. Right, then we have drop safe. Um, you know, they provide the drop safe barriers, netting, and helideck perimeters, and then, then uh, uh, pouches. So, uh, I see most of you have already answered the, the polls on the screen. So, you know, if you, if you would like uh, any of the information, um, then, um, you know, we'll, we'll get in, in touch with you. Um, so, with that, uh, I'd like to hand it back over. Um, or I'd like to hand it over to William just to give his um, his perspectives uh, on on the presentation before we kick off the um, uh, panel discussion. Hey, thank you, Joachim. Hope you hear me well. And uh, good day, everyone. And thanks for joining us. Um, and uh, and thanks to Bing Hui and David uh, for sharing uh, um, uh, the thoughts about a uh, how we what you can do. Uh, in order to, for us to be safer, you know, um, really from the Baker Hughes perspective, and and um, and I've been working with the uh, the team over here. Uh, we work with many customers across the region, uh, and for for a long period of time, uh, what we have been trying to do um, is to make sure that we do our part on the left hand side of the bow tie. You know, a lot of preventive work, um, creating the barriers out there. A lot of our work, and we have so many products and services that we all offer to our customers, and we go to the site. We do not exactly manage some of the, a lot of the sites, but what we do is we understand, you know, from the drops guidelines, you know, and which is a fantastic document, which allow us to be aligned with our customers, the operators, and so on. So when our guys, you know, our people go to the, to the customer's location, we very much know what we are talking about when it comes, we have a common language, uh, understand how we should control the risk, the, the, the type of risk we are looking at. Now, uh, our part, like I said, uh, on the left-hand side of the bow tie, uh, very critical, uh, engineering, uh, what kind of shackles are we going to use, what kind of pins, uh, what kind of pulleys, um, uh, are they, uh, is it applicable to, to the tools, are they the latest, uh, what are we buying, who are we buying from, 
our procurement, do they know what to buy? You know, is it the cheapest off the shelf or is it the best, you know, or probably the most suitable? Um, MOC, uh, management of change as well, you know, uh, is, is it a, a different rate? Uh, we should consider different different uh, uh, tools that we should be bringing there. Training and competency of our people. Uh, are they up to date? Do they get regularly uh, updated? Uh, inspection checklist. So so uh, and do they know uh, the drop zone as well? You know, uh, where are they not supposed to be in, and where are they uh, supposed to be out? So those are the things that we do to make sure that uh, the operation together with. Uh, our, our customers are, are, are all aligned. So that, that's a big part of what we do. Um, and, and, and now, the, 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 what, is, what is really the beauty of the thing as well is because for a long period of time, we have always been a service company, right? And, uh, with, the, uh, with the transition of energy and, and bigger use, of course, offering a lot of different other services, uh, uh, including uh, turbo machinery and all that. Uh, we actually tr are trying to bring the knowledge that we have from Wales, uh, uh, offshore operation, and bring it to to the other other services and uh, within the company. So so there's a lot a lot to to share, uh, a lot to learn, uh, and and it is uh, it is why we have always been uh, engaging and, and doing this. Uh, so that that helps to to promote the uh, the knowledge of drops. So, so that's the biggest perspective. Uh, yep, and I hope that uh, we can have a healthy discussion and going forward you know, in the next few minutes. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, uh, thanks, William, uh, for that perspective. Um, so I'd, I'd uh, like to. Am I still on mute? No, no, okay, all right, good. Um, so um, I'd like to invite the audience to use the Q&A um, um, function uh, to ask uh, any, any questions. Um, and then, you know, the, the panel will do their best to, to yeah, respond. Um, so I see one um, uh, question coming from Dani. Uh, so from the floor workforce pers personnel perspective, understanding to have sufficient variable, not always, uh, be the same for everyone. What is your thought or experience that uh, can be shared facing uh, this issue? Uh, Beng Ho, you want to take that one? Yeah, um, that's that's a that's a, a good question. All right. When I when I think about um, um, the the understanding of the risk at, at our work sites, when I when I think about let's say the rig floor and the the amount of uh, of of uh, of uh, of I guess the different companies that that, that work in our sites are right, and then I see where the challenge is right in terms of um, um, uh, having a, a common understanding of of, of the risk lah right uh, when we do our activity. So so in this case we can have multiple companies all all working and 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 doing uh, well activity um, at, at any one site lah right. Um, so then we you know obviously then it's it's about bridging bridging that gap. Um, and how and how do we do that? There are, there are various things we can do, and, and one of them uh, we say is uh, is like I shared, you know, the job by design, right? Um, if if traditionally um, we get we get um, I guess the recontractor to, to to help uh, design those those job by design templates to identify the risk, and so then then now we are trying to branch that out to 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 get the service. Uh, service um, uh, suppliers as well, uh, like, like Baker Hughes and all that to, to, to help design, uh, right? Um, the, um, the, 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 the templates, all uh, right? And ultimately what, what we use these templates for is, is to, 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 to gain common understanding of, of, of the recent, recent hazards and mitigations in, in our sites, right? Uh, because that, that's, that's, that's the, um, I guess, where everything ultimately ends up. Uh, we have uh, all our procedures, we have our, you know, bow ties, we have our risk registers, but how can we, um, how can we get everybody to the same space, right? Um, and and uh, we we believe that this this uh, this job by design template, for example, uh, can can help help do that la. Obviously, there's you know um, you know there's, there's training, but once again, um, training is 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 varied. Uh, the the quality of drops training, um, depending on who 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 you sign up with, is 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 different. Uh, you bring various types of uh, drops uh, risk with with the products that 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 um, you bring to site. Um, so yeah, for me, you know, uh, get working on a common platform to 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 to, to help elevate um, 
and, and get a common understanding through a process like job by design it, it is something um, that we are doing in Shell. So I hope that helps. All right. Um, all right. I see one question <laughs> from Sulaiman. Um, what is the most effective way to improve the knowledge of people about drops risk? Um, I don't see training is, is the effective way and bring their attention uh, to prevent from happening. Um, William, you want to answer that one? <laughs> yeah, I would love to answer that one. Thanks. So training is definitely a uh, one of those things that we can't live without, isn't it? But it's not the answer to everything. We all understand that, right? And we're only talking about training. We haven't even talked about competency as well. So, so uh, I like to talk about training together with competency uh, to make sure that you know well, what we convey and people can absorb as well. And that's uh, that's also a small part of, of uh, what we do to make sure that we prevent incident from happening. In the early part of Benghui's slide, it mentioned that uh, the incidents do happen. People make mistakes. Um, and that's something that we have to accept. Uh, um, it is normal, it is human, uh, all of us here. And you and I, we have made it before, right? I, I do not pretend that I have not made any mistake in my career. So so now did I, so that, I think the good thing and lucky thing is I survived, you know, where, uh, even though I made a mistake, right? And then my company has been, uh, of course, uh, the company I work for and my bosses was at, Tolerant and then accepted my I make a mistake and then we learn from there and that's how we, uh, how we how we progress. Uh, we can have to try to make training has uh, uh, has uh, you know a better and improve along the way and make it you know even uh, more easier for people to understand. But I think we should look at the entire aspect of uh, the whole operations. Like what Ben we um, mentioned just now, uh, do we understand the risk? You know the, the job that we are going to and. And when we design the job, is it simple and easy for people to understand? Right. And it, it's not easy in an operation. I, I, I think uh, for us sitting here and we talk about it and imagine the number of people working out there on the rig now while we are all in, in, having a discussion. They are facing a lot of uh, a dynamic situation um, and it's not written anywhere in the procedure. Uh, so so it, it, people require to have a... We're making, we require people to make a decision and, and uh, in the circumstances they are in. So apart, like I said, uh, apart from training, uh, I think uh, the job design uh, it is critical. Um, and, and if everything else fails, then let's make sure that we all feel safely as well. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, uh, William. Um, let me see, there's a few more um, uh, coming through. Uh, one of them is a bit longer. I need to read through first before I read it out loud. But um, we've got Gordon who's asking uh, workplace complacency is one major, major recognized drops risk and needs to be mitigated. What's the current industry best practice followed by Shell or, or, or Baker Hughes? Um, who wants to go first? So I'm just trying to understand the question. Uh, so complacency is is a risk, and um, yeah, if, I mean I'm I'm happy if folks want to go off mute and, and maybe elaborate. Uh, so so happy happy to hear a bit more about the context of this question. Yeah, I, I I'm also not sure. I I, I guess from from a, from a safety perspective, you know, sometimes sometimes people know the the, the procedures policies, um, but they just uh, choose not to follow them. Um, mm -hmm. They take shortcuts, um, and you know how, how how do you manage that? Uh, I can take that one. Uh, it's a widely discussed in my company in Baker Hughes, so I can share. So what we have been doing is for a long time, in the last couple of years, we have been talking about human performance and human factors, and um, and we for and we are trying to educate the, the leaders over here and allow people to know that. The complacency should not be stated anywhere in the incident report, um, and and that should not be uh, one of the causes of incident. So, a, a, a big shift in what we are supposed to you know um, to react to incidents and approach uh, uh, incidents. So we are trying to tell people that complacency is not a cause, and we have to dig further and understand what lies beneath. What are the reasons behind complacency. So, so 
we will not stop there and and um and we are just uh, like i said uh, trying to educate the investigator and say let's not stop there and and say complacency let's continue to dig further and ask ourselves what resulted in those complacency and and what resulted in those my my not on task i not on task you know that kind of question so so that allow us to again find solution in the job design um, uh, rather than trying to put it on human. Uh, so so that's how we are approaching. Yep. And I, I think I can, I can add to that really quickly, uh, uh, William, the, I like, I like uh, Baker Hughes, um, you know, to you, to, yeah, to, to human performance. Um, I like the fact that you mentioned the, the systems approach uh, to, to investigation. Um, when, when, we, when we look at um, why, why things go wrong, we, we don't uh, immediately uh, ask, uh, you know, the, the who, uh, right? we try to understand the why um, and, and complacency is, 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 um, is I guess, um, is, is not, really the, not, not, not really the issue, like you said, right? Um, it, it has to be caused by, by something, and it's, it's, the, it's a system that, that, um, that allows that complacency, if you like, to, to, to set in. And then, you know, so, so yeah, I guess we didn't shell, uh, just to answer your question, we, we are trying to um, change uh, or modify the way we investigate. Uh, um, to, to, to understand, you know, why things happen, uh, so a causal perspective to things, uh, right? Um, to ask the, the human performance questions, right? Um, and then to, to, to you know, uh, to, to, to take those, those human performance learnings back, back, into, back into our, our work processes, uh, right? So if, you know, if, if something is designed in a way where it's easy for, for someone to, uh, uh, you know, to, to take a shortcut and do something, then can we design that system to, to be, to be, to, 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 um, to be uh, to be done uh, in in another manner to prevent um, you know this this uh, the, the human performance or human factors to 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 creep in or to to influence the the decisions of folks at the time. I hope that helps. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. So uh, I think uh, Claire Davies says something similar. It's all about caring about people, uh, how to get that culture in place, so that you can let the crew use uh, these tools, but determine with their own knowledge and eyes and ears the focus uh, for concerns. Um, it is important that drops does not become a check a checkbox exercise. And how can one ensure that individuals performing uh, the work can own the needs to bring their care for each other to ensure that identification is actively specific and appropriate to the hazards and the barriers practically available in their workplace? I think you co covered a lot of it already. Um, uh, David, is any, any um, do you want to build on that? Uh, yeah, sure. So, yeah, you know, I'd say that the safety culture set from senior management and that drips right down through the organization you know so in the question there you know we talked about you know how can we get our um you know people to like do certain things well our management need to show that they are doing it as it well and that they are committed to preventing dropped objects and that way it won't feel just like a you know tick box exercise when there are incidents or near misses we need to make sure that that investigation doesn't move straight to the immediate causes and blames those that are at the work site is that we look at the underlying causes as to why we set you know the, the like people up that did they have the correct equipment did they have the correct time the correct working conditions were they trained adequately etc cetera, etc cetera. and then make sure that the organization seem to address the underlying causes and not simply blame um the um people and then when we start doing things like that then the workforce should see that you know that senior management have got that commitment to prevent and drop objects and hopefully they'll uh, feel that, that like they'll feel that it isn't just a um, checkbox exercise and hopefully get people to start to you know care and i'd say finally if people do things like you know we say that the final barrier is the right of anyone to stop the job and that applies with drops as well if something changes you know during the operation you know and if someone does stop their like, job is that you know to thank them for doing so and make sure that everyone feels empowered you know to do exactly that so i'd say that yeah that's a probably a long-winded answer but i'd say the short answer is it starts very much from the top and works its way down through the organization yeah yeah 
Th thanks so much, David. Um, I just quickly uh, share my my screen uh, because there was a, a question regarding uh, standards, and you know we, you know, as Drops, we, we don't really uh, set uh, set standards. Uh, we we make recommendations, and and you know if if you want to get started on you know on any facility, any organization, then you know Drops Online is is a very good good source. So if if you're not really sure how to get started, the best place is to start with the recommended. Um, practice and from there you know that ties in kind of all the documentation um, uh, together so that 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 should be a, a great place to 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 get uh, started for you uh, okay so we answered that one uh, one more question can you please share um, information on inspecting for drops using drones in the drilling industry uh, you know I'd love to love to do a webinar on that subject uh, just alone right uh, I think it, it has great potential also introduces some 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 new risks um, but uh, yeah there are companies doing that um, but um, um, yeah, it, it, it will take another hour to to cover that, but definitely something we should uh, we should should explore. Um, so we're it's already four o'clock now, but time flies. Um, so yes, before we move to the networking reception, um, I just like to 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 welcome you know each of our panelists to just say something to 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 close. So maybe we get started with you, uh, Ben Hoy. <laughs> Thanks, Joachim. Oh, oh, folks, I don't think I have anything else to add. I've spoken enough in the in the last hour, uh, but you know, just just want to reemphasize the, the the title of the of the webinar around this concept of, of failing safely, and I hope uh, you 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 um, you picked up a, a thing or two uh, from from that perspective um, when you when you plan your work. Um, yes, we can we can uh, uh, you know uh, put in quite a lot of effort on the left hand side to put the, the bow tie to prepare to prepare our sites, prepare our work, prepare our people. But ultimately, you know, uh, things can still happen, and uh, you know, we want to think about, um, you know, uh, the, the 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 backup plan. Uh, what if it does happen, and then how can we fail safely? So I'll, I think I'll, I'll stop with that. Thanks, um, William. Hey, thanks, uh, Joachim. And so, so maybe my last one will be uh, big. We always talk about you know, how to fail safely. I'll just uh, touch on the point about a uh, the care part. Uh, um, and care comes with trust as well. And, and uh, if there's no trust, and then uh, between the management, the employees, the frontline, uh, the people in the office, between the customers, operators, and the service providers, if we can't have that, then it, job by design will be, will be difficult to achieve. And alignment will be difficult to achieve as well. So, yeah, so um, let's uh, continue to work very closely, engage, and, and we definitely will close the gaps along the way. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, David? Yeah, I don't have much more to add, but more just to sort of reiterate, you know, preventing dropped objects is very difficult. And, um, you know, there's lots of things that can cause them. There's lots of work that we can do to prevent them. You know, there's no one thing on its own. It's a combination of the efforts from everyone. So just to reiterate that everyone's got a role to play, you know, in the prevention of dropped objects. Excellent, excellent. Well, thanks, thanks so much, David, um, William, and Beng Hoi uh, for for joining me here. We'll be transitioning to the um, uh, virtual networking reception. Um, you need to start the, um, the Drops Metaverse uh, app for that. Um, a lot of people have asked, you know, regarding the the presentation, the recording, and and, and stuff. Uh, actually, today is my last day before the holidays, so I'm gonna, you know, need a little bit of time to process all that, and then I'll I'll, I'll send it out to you. Um, but you definitely, um, it will be published and 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 be available in in the coming weeks. So with that, thanks very much, and uh, yeah, see you in the uh, Drops Metaverse. Excellent. See you soon. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.